All right, how's everybody doing? Um, been a little bit, again. I feel like I say that at the start of a lot of these videos, but, you know, it has. It's been about a week. Um, speaking of about a week, the game's actually out in about a week. Uh, so this might be the last uh, little analysis of any of these videos that I do, unless there's, like, some particular footage that's like, okay, this is actually ridiculous, which I haven't really seen that much of believe it or not, besides, like, some of the stuff that I've been seeing with this with this gentleman. But we'll talk about him in a bit. Um, yeah, uh, this is probably the last little analysis video I'm gonna do for pre-release footage. But it's definitely the, um, it's definitely not the end of, like, my stuff that I'm gonna be planning on doing, because I got a couple of different ideas that actually seem pretty good. Um, I'm not gonna talk about them here, because I don't want people to steal them. Even though, like, the people watching this probably aren't going to make them. You get the point. I don't want my stuff stolen. It's a cute idea. Unless you put me in the credits. I'll be all right, I'll be all right with it if you do that. But uh, let's get into it. All the information, like, players and stuff like that is going to be in the description. And uh, we're going to get into it. So the first thing that we see here is actually kind of... This is actually kind of nice because it's a Marth thing. Um, Marth does... He does dash off and he does his forward air. And this is, like, the super weak hit forward air. Like, this is the weakest hit, forward air. It's the closest one. Um, and it does about 10%, which is actually pretty good. Like, that's actually pretty good damage for a weak hit. But after that, he actually gets a follow-up. He gets a side B. Side B was made slower, but this follow-up definitely works, especially at zero. Like, that's definitely a guaranteed combo, and so that's about 22%, 22.5% for free, just off of a forward air, which is really nice. It might be dependent on, like, where you land the sword hit. Like, if you get, like, the middle hitbox, it might not work as well. And if you get the tip, it probably doesn't work at all, and you have to do some other follow-up. But 22% is nothing to sneeze at. It's actually, like, really nice to have. I don't know if Lucina can do it, because Lucina's consistency through the blade thing kind of makes weak hits not exist. But if she can do it, she'll probably put more damage on doing it. Either way, it's good. It's, it's just a nice thing to have. Speaking of nice things to have... Uh, Midnight Side B. All of Midnight's... Ah, we'll talk about Midnight in a second. Um, so Midnight does forward air here, right? And something really silly that I noticed that... I mean, it's not that relevant. I just think it's funny. He does forward air, and it literally does 6%. With, like, a damage boost. Because <laughs> it's a 1v1. That's, like... That's, like, baby damage. That's nothing. I, I just think that's so funny that it does, like, zero damage. So I suppose that forward air is just like super non-threatening. Speaking of, but it is it is threatening at higher percents, but at low percents it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. However, he does do this short hop forward air and it does not auto cancel, which means short hop for, like instant forward air might not actually be safe. You might be able to punish that. In fact, you might be able to reaction like parry it, like block the first two hits and then parry the third one, um, which would make that forward air really bad. <laughs> that would actually make that move very, very not good. Um, at least his back air, like, the hits are very staggered out, so it would be hard to, like, get the particular parries. And you could just fast fall and avoid the parry anyway, and they could miss a punish. But that forward air, the hits happen very quickly, and so it might not be hard to get the parry at the end. Uh, but at higher percents, it does lead to some stuff that maybe we'll talk about in a second. Does do this down throw, and he goes for another forward air here. The thing about this little follow-up is that we're going to slow this down because I'm sure some of you have seen this, but maybe not everyone Let's talk about this little this little selection of things here. He does his forward air here. This is the same situation. You could definitely do up air. Because he does run off. This is an up air. And then you double jump up air, double jump up air, and you carry Marth off the stage, and then you do a uh, tornado, and it hits him off, and you uh, get a free stock. I don't know if it would kill at this percent. It might. It might kill at this percent, because Marth is kind of like the worst weight for combos. Like He just kind of gets hit with everything, and then he dies early, because he's like not that heavy. But the Meta Knight does, like, the safe follow-up, which is forward air, which is fine. Like, I can't blame anybody for not going for the super optimal follow-ups in a game that literally isn't even out yet. Like, no, nobody's really... I mean, people have labbed it, but most people haven't. So they're not going to have it all set up right. He does this forward air, though, and that does put Marth in, like, a really bad situation. Um, it puts him at this angle with Meta Knight here. Marth can't really challenge Meta Knight very easily, so he has to double jump early. And the Meta Knight kind of, he just does up B, which is a bit of an odd choice. Because, like, this is such a, this is such a good position for Meta Knight here. 
Um, the only question is like getting back to the stage faster than Marth can and also scaring Marth into picking an option like air dodge here. But he just does up B and it whiffs and he just gets back to the ledge and it's all reset. So nothing really happened. He does do something really cool. This is something I really like doing as Smash 4 Meta Knight. Like whenever I actually play the character, which is, I mean, it's been a while, but like I have played him. He does footstool to down air. This is a guaranteed thing that actually does work. And it's good because it's an option select. If you don't get the footstool, or if you get like the phantom footstool, you go flying upward. So they can't hit you. Like if they shield the footstool, you'll just go flying up and then you'll be fine because you're Mennonite and you have 69 jumps and you can just do whatever you want. Like it doesn't matter. Like landing is not going to be a particular difficulty. Does that F smash? That F smash actually gets punished. So, you know, news there. It's not actually that hard to punish, but we do see NATO. Okay, all right. Um, Meta Knight in this game is very Brawl-esque. He's not nearly as good as Brawl Meta Knight because Brawl Meta Knight had up B, which is arguably even dumber than NATO, which is arguably dumber than... Like, everything in Meta Knight's kit was completely stupid, and um, NATO was just, like, helpful. This NATO isn't as good, but it's good enough to be, like, a problem because NATO was already too good. It does, the thing, the change that really killed it was that it has one hit and it has so much mobility. It's like Brawl. And Brawls had like multiple hits, but there was always one particular hitbox that was like really strong. So that meant it could do a bunch of shield damage, so you couldn't block it. But also you couldn't get away from it because it was really fast. But also you couldn't challenge it because it was, like the hitboxes were transcendent and whatnot. And you couldn't really do much about that. You would have to require some level of invincibility. Or you'd have to hit it in, like, the latter half of the move. But that's talking about Meta Knight, Nato, and Brawl, which is a complex to topic in terms of trying to beat that move. In this game, it doesn't seem as, like, immune to punishes. But, like, like the lag at the end of this is actually pretty heavy. But if you do it on shield, you basically can't touch it. Like, look at, look at the way Meta Knight moves after landing this hit. Look at how far he goes. If Meta Knight hits your shield, he can just hold back, and then, like, you're not going to be able to punish that, because he can just drift over back to the ledge, re-grab the ledge, and then he's just sitting really nice. Um, I don't know if, like, planking will be a thing, in terms of, like, just get on stage, NATO, go back to the ledge, because NATO isn't impossible to beat in this game. But it would be nice. Tries to go for up air, tries to get some ladder stuff. Doesn't really work out. That almost worked. Um, Meta Knight's up B got heavily nerfed, but it can still kill. It just requires, like being very high up and high percent which is super different the other thing is it doesn't get the second hit all the time you can actually see by the um the little animation like let's just slow this down you can see by the animation of up b see how like this little yellow bit goes all the way up here when he does the second one it doesn't it like ends here instead of up here where it would have as the first one so it's basically like it doesn't connect into itself unless you hit it like the base of the move, which is not impossible. In fact, it's pretty often happens, but it definitely got heavily nerfed, which uh, I mean is fair. It's like, how are you gonna have an up B that gets nerfed? Probably some of the mo like, Meta Knight probably got nerfed the most from Brawl. Probably, definitely got nerfed the most from Brawl. How is it that that happened? And then they had to nerf him again, and then he's still godlike. <laughs> like, like that's silly to me, but whatever. He does down B, down B's punishable. That's not really rocket science. The hitbox is huge. He does do dash up down smash. Meta Knight's down smash, I believe, is tied for the fastest in the game at about, like, four frames? Three frames? Something like that? I think it's four frames. I don't know if it's four frames in this game, but it's ridiculously quick. Uh, the first hit isn't that strong, but the back hit, like, is pretty strong, but that's not as fast. It's, it's just a good move. It's, like, it's good for the same reason his down tilt is good. Um, because it's really quick and it's a, like a, just a poke. However, being able to dash up and do those buttons, like dash up, up tilt, dash up, F, or dash up, F smash, dash up, F tilt, is like, that's scary, man. That's, that's not a thing that I wanted to ever see. <laughs> I didn't realize how, how terrifying this character was with the ability to dash and do anything, because he's just so quick, too. Uh, we do see a couple of things there that are like actually pretty nice, some returning stuff from Smash 4. Uh, Mennonite does F smash. And it has, like, no lag, the way it does in Smash 4. Then he does his back air. It's a full hop back air. doesn't fast fall, and it auto-cancels, which is nice. Like, he had that in Smash 4, 
Uh, it was pretty good for pressuring on these kind of ledges here on Battlefield, where it's just, you, you know, full hop, back air their shield, drift back. You can't, they don't really have an answer to that. It's just, like, shield pressure. And then you can continue to pressure afterwards if you think they're going to get greedy to try and punish that. But it's just nice to have. Like, it's just a good thing. And then we see easily the most woke follow-up of all time, all right? So this Mennonite, he gets his grab. And he says, I don't even need down throw, the one that could get a kill here. I'm a forward throw, and then I'm a side B, and you're going to die at 80 off the side. Because I knew that, I mean, you can't argue with this. You can't argue with this entire sequence. I'm sure if anybody looked at this and, was, and saw it, and they'd be like, why would you ever do that? It works because the Marth whiffs a forward air, and it's just like, nah, it was a read, guy. We, I read your forward air, and I knew you were going to do that, so I did side B, and I killed you off the side. Ah, it was meant to be. Um, obviously, that's not a thing. Like, obviously, that's not a thing. But <laughs> but it's just kind of funny to me. Uh, moving on, however, we do see NATO on shield. It's a very particular hitbox, like a very particular set of circumstances where it hits in terms of, like, it's under a platform, and, like, that's really hard to deal with, especially in this game where shield dropping is not a thing. Um, I didn't know that until like yesterday and somebody told me and I was like, wow, why, why would they remove that? I don't really know why they'd remove it, but, um, this like pressure under the shield thing, this is actually like impossible to deal with. This is just, you have to submit to this. It doesn't do any shield damage or anything, but it's, it, you just have, you have to be like, okay, this is the problem now. Oh man. Um, of course the, the Martha's going to try and punish and he actually gets it. But he only gets it because the Mennonite actually presses a button. Yeah, see, he, right here, he's, he tries to dash forward and uh, probably dash grab, maybe, one of the two things, because he thinks he's, like, advantage or whatever, and he is not. He gets side beat for his troubles, and it's pretty good. That back air is strong. Um, Mennonite's kind of light, but this back air is really good because it hits at the base right here. And this is the, considered the tipper because of how tipper hitboxes work and, like, Rory's hitboxes work the same way where it's, like, technically spacing based but also because of it's like the way the sword gets swung it's partially timing based where it's like if you get the super early hitbox regardless of where Meta Knight is it's gonna swing as the tipper and it prioritizes the weak hits but the weak hit doesn't exist down here because it's like only tipper and it's it's weird it's like odd but it's how it works um it does get the kill though which is nice it means back air will be good for edge guarding the way it is in smash 4 Ooh, okay so i thought this martha was gonna try and punish that f smash and he did not he does roll, and he looks like he's going to get his shield broken for his troubles. Does get F smashed, and it does like 18%. It does get charged a little bit, but that's a lot of damage to get off of it. To like a random F smash that you're probably going to be able to throw out all the time anyway. Um, Meta Knight as a whole is like kind of just a big... He's just a threat at all times. He's a character you're going to have to play very defensive. Like around. And uh, I, will, I will talk about my opinions on that in a little bit. But um, the game lends itself to Men Knight being very strong in terms of like how that works. He gets another forward air. Ooh, good down air. Tries to catch a double jump. Uh, down air doesn't really send anywhere, but down air has never sent anywhere, especially not at that low percent. Like it's never done that much. Oh man, dash up side B. Okay, so dash up side B as Marth actually does look very strong. It looks like that. It looks that strong for all of the Marths, all of the Fire Emblem side Bs that are like the the Dancing Blades. Uh, or double edge dance if you're going to be particular about it. Um, but he runs up and does this side B, and this actually seems, if you space it right, it seems so hard to deal with. Especially with like a couple of the different variations that are really good on shield. Does another one. I mean, I can't blame him, it's working. So, um, ooh, that's actually a big deal. I completely forgot this happens. Um, so, Med Knight tries to approach with NATO, and the NATO actually does get beaten out by Marth's side B. That being said, Marth side B is huge. It's a big hitbox. It's kind of not something you can mess around with in terms of trying to trade with it, unless you also have a really big hitbox. So he can kind of reach through NATO. So we don't know if NATO has, like, the, the priority that it had in Brawl. I hope it doesn't. That would be dumb, and that would make this character probably the best in the game. But, like, it, it, you can definitely still beat it, especially if you have a disjoint. It's, it's something you can beat. Um, guess it's down throw. What's the follow-up, friend? Nothing. Okay. So, the thing about Men Knight down throw is that, like, the, the DI in Smash 4, if you DI'd the right way, 
the men night didn't really get much much of anything off of it besides like the di mix up stuff where it's like oh i can dash attack or i can up tilt like pivot up tilt uh in this game that di i don't know if he was diing optimally but like this is a very nice angle for men night follow-ups i don't know what his follow-ups are it might actually just be up b or nato just raw immediately but it does look pretty good gets greedy with edge guard which i mean like it's men night it's kind of what men night does we do see something awesome, and by awesome, I mean awesome for people who are playing Meta Knight. Um, dash attack still crosses up. You can probably still punish it the same way, because it doesn't look like it's that it ends that much quicker. But because dash attack crosses up, that means he has the same mix-up as before, where it's like, I'm going to do dash attack, and I'm going to get a kill off of it. And if I don't, like if you shield it, I might cross up or I might not. I say, I say get a kill off of it. Like, you can get out of that in Smash 4. I don't know if you can get out of that in this game. But you probably can. This is probably a way. Life finds a way. Um, uh, but yeah, dash attack crosses up, so the little 50-50 uh, that Meta Knight had in Smash 4 still kind of exists. So long as you can get the follow-ups off of dash attack that like you can get in Smash 4, which is probably likely. Also, um, moving on from that, we see a wave dash. Look at that. Look at that cute little wave dash right there. It's not that long. To my knowledge, I haven't seen that different distances in wave dash lengths um so most characters might actually have identical wave dash lengths which would be an interesting way to set it up because that would make certain characters wave dashes completely irrelevant and other characters like really really good like i think robin if he's a slow or incineroar might actually really like having that to wave land on platforms and stuff like that just speed up their movement a little bit uh it would be really nice to have are we gonna do the same thing nope we are not he's not that woke um, does that F smash? So, okay, this is a scary moment. This is a scary moment to me because, um, back air doesn't really do this in Smash 4. Oh, no, wait, it's just the first hit. Never mind. Back air kind of does this in Smash 4. But because of the reduced landing lag on back air, um, it gets only the first hit and Meta Knight can land and probably follow up with, like, the right circumstances. So falling back air is, like, super intimidating, basically, is what we're learning here. Um, so there you go, that's nice. Two other important things that we see, like right in a row there. We see forward air has this upward hitbox, which means that you can pressure with shields under platforms like this. There's nothing they can do about it because there's no shield drop or anything like that. They just have to contest with this pressure and like probably they, their only option is to jump away, go to this top platform. Just like try to get out of that situation. Uh, Meta Knight being able to do this is like he already had like good shield pressure with up air and stuff like that but this is awesome because it's multi-hit and can probably shield poke and he can get like a couple of cute follow-ups off of forward air too so that is actually pretty nice and then we also see up tilt hitbox this is really like tall it's tall like this in smash 4 but this is really like nice to have in terms of like this high reaching thing that goes uh, like through the platform that's just really nice because you get so much good stuff off of up tilt um that's that it's it's just it's just nice to have exactly um we do see the down b again and that is still laggy a lot of the stuff about Meta Knight is similar in terms of like idea and wow nice one guy um a lot of the the concepts of Meta Knight and smash 4 still carry over the only differences is or differences are some of the old stuff is worse and some of the new stuff is better um, and it does die to Marth Tipper forward air. Um, that's not really rocket. Like that's not really something that's all that special. Uh, Meta Knight would have died there in Smash Four too. Definitely would have died there. Um, Marth Tipper forward air is still pretty strong, and you can still edge guard with it and whatnot. It's, it's just good. I mean, it's a good move. It's gonna like win matchups and stuff. I I have a question. I just realized something. Let's look at Marth forward air, right? It's about this big. Like, let's, I'm just trying to shape in the arc with my with my mouse here. Let's look at Meta Knight forward air. It's about this big. <laughs> Is it actually, like, the size of Marth forward air? I hope it's not. Because, like, Meta Knight and Brawl had this thing, the invisible sword, where, like, it was it, the hitboxes were always longer than they looked like they should be. But, I mean, that just looks like it's bigger than Marth forward air. <laughs> just, that's just what that looks like. And I really hope it's not. Because that's going to be upsetting. They just look at, like, Mark's got this big sword and Midnight's got this toothpick. And it's like, hey, mine's better. Oh, man. Is that forward throw? Stop forward throwing, man. Forward throw's dead. Killed that throw. 
It makes sense to me. I was thinking about it earlier. This is a little bit of a tangent. Like, why they got rid of Ford, though, for Marth and and uh, Krom, I guess, for that matter. But also, uh, Roy, most notably, because, like, that's the character I played. Um, it was good in Smash 4 because you got follow-ups off of it, and you got stage control off of it, which was really, really, really nice. Like, that was a nice thing to have. Because it was basically like, hey, you want neutral? You got neutral. Um... In this game, they don't have it because I think they want stage control to be much more important and much more difficult to maintain. Um, like how you can't run through people's shields. If you're on the ledge and you try to run through people's shields to try and like dash back to center stage, you can't just do that anymore, which means the corner is like actually an intimidating place. Um, but yeah, I think, I think stage control is going to be much more important and much more, um, much more difficult to contest and hold in this game which lends itself to being a little bit more defensive. But again, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Lands with Nair, and that is punishable. That would have been punishable before, and it still is now. Oh, no. Oh, never mind. Doesn't get the follow-ups. The thing about Meta Knight's up air now, and I say, I say now, it still kind of works like this in Smash 4, too. But he gets his up air, and it goes... Like, there's a selection of hitboxes with up air that you really, really want to fish for at certain times. He gets the one that pops up a little bit more. He gets the second one that pops up again. He goes for the third one because he thinks it's just going to send him about here, but he's more to the left because he's DIing out, almost definitely. And um, you have to fast fall, double jump, up air, and like that's how you do it instead of um, just up airing multiple times. You have to do fast fall, um, which is what he has to do in Smash 4 in like a lot of circumstances too, where you just do like th four up airs into a nair, and that just works. Um, but yeah, it's. Um, it's, it still seems like at least a little bit difficult to actually get those combos. They're still really good, but still a little difficult. Moving on from that, we're actually going to talk about a Marth thing here. Uh, Marth does this F smash, and this is like not a strong hit F smash. Or no, wait, 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 wait. Go back, my friend. Go back to this F smash. Because we need to talk about this angle that this F smash sends at. Marth gets back on stage. He does his F smash. This is like... Like... This is like killer for a lot of characters. Like... If if Matt gets hit with that up uh, with that F smash that particular hitbox because I'm pretty sure it reaches slightly above the platform so you can just do it and it'll like hit Mac and it'll send him flying like this that's a dead Mac like he can side B you hit him out of the side B and he's just dead all of a sudden because he doesn't get a side B back if you hit him out of it but that's Mac though that's like an extreme example but like most of the cast is gonna have a hard time dealing with this particular arc and like that angle of um of a uh, hit. Which is nice to have, you know? That's like, that's good setup pressure, or good setup for um, edge guarding and whatnot. Nice combo, nerd. All right, actually, might be, might be nice combo, nerd. Nope, never mind. Actually, just not not getting anything off of those. Ooh, hey, you can't pause like that. That's a stock. Someone's got to give up a stock. Nah, I'm just kidding. Um, we're missing a lot of Meta Knight follow-ups. I don't know if this guy actually plays Meta Knight or not. He's doing a couple Meta Knight things, but like, again, we see here the... Meta Knight Forward Air is, like, big, and it's, like, it, it doesn't, it comes out quickly, but the end lag is, like, like, the landing lag and stuff like that, this whole period of time, like, I can, I will demonstrate to this to you, ladies and gentlemen, and this is something that people uh, seem to struggle with in a lot of Smash games, is, like, when hitboxes are active and when they are not. Boom. This is punishable. This is when you dash in and do something. Like, don't wait for him to land. Hit him while he's in midair during that lag. Which is why, like, short hop fast fall aerials and something like melee is so important. Because if you just not fast fall, you're not getting... You're going to get punished. Because people can just hit you after the hitbox happens. But, like, once that third hitbox is gone, this is all punish. This is all you have to run up and deal with this move. Um, a lot of characters are going to be able to, like, dash grab and stuff like that. So forward air doesn't seem like an excellent neutral tool. Especially not because of, like, low percents. It doesn't really get much. High percents you can get, like, falling forward air to up B. Which is scary, but might require a specific DI, too. Um, it just doesn't seem like that great of a neutral tool. But Meta Knight's neutral is never really that good. And that worked. Okay. So here's the thing. This actually is a bit of a moment of truth situation because I don't know if this would have worked in Smash 4, but we can see if it works in this one. Because uh, that looked like it was all hit stun. That looked like he had nothing he could do. Like, let's just, let's just look at this after it slowed down. You know, it, I mean, like, if he pressed a button, it wouldn't have worked. If he air dodged, he probably couldn't have gotten away from it unless the air dodge movement is, like, frame one. Um, that looks like it's just guaranteed, and then that's a kill. Um, so, yeah, that's 
kind of dumb, but that's the way it is in Smash 4, so... It's not like Smash 4 isn't dumb, though. Anywho, um, that's that's just a nice thing to for Midnight to have. What's up, Midnight? How you doing? And he's gone. Alright. Um, let's talk for a little bit about Midnight, and let's talk about how I think this game is gonna work. Yeah, I'll just have this shot. Um... <laughs> Something interesting that I've been seeing a lot of, especially on Twitter, and like after I got to play the game a little bit, is um, a lot of characters are very threatening. They have very, very high damage or high like kill potential options at close range. And because of that, because of how that is, and because so many characters can do that, I think this game is going to be like heavily defensive in a way that is very different to how it is in something like Brawl. Like, in Brawl, um, Brawl plays defensive because offensive gameplay just doesn't exist. Like, that's just not even a viable option because hit stun isn't good enough. Like, shield is just that strong. You play defensive because that's how you play the game. In this game, you, you probably are going to have to play defensive because of how threatening offense is. Like, you're not going to run in and try to pressure someone like, I don't know, half the like DK or something like that. Like, you're not going to try and deal with DK buttons. Like, he's, he puts on so much damage off of throws and stuff like that. He doesn't get kills off of it as early, but, like, his buttons are still ridiculous. He's got stuff, you know what I mean? And his movement is, like, really good. So you're going to have to play a little bit more defensive. So like Marth, like, you don't want to run into Marth buttons. You don't want to do that. So you're going to have to play maybe a little bit more spacing-based. You're going to have to weave your way around Marth. This is from the perspective of, I don't know, someone like like Fox or Mario or something like that who can't really play defensively. Um, but no, I think, I think this game is going to end up, like, the meta is going to develop into a very defensive set of circumstances because you have to. Not because it's, like, the, the strongest way to play, but because if you don't play like that, you're gonna die at, like, 60. Like, twice. And, and you're just gonna be on your last stock and you're just gonna be sitting there and be like, well, I guess I gotta sit around for a little bit. Um, and this is, like... It's interesting, right? Because defensive play will pretty much exist in just about every fighting game, with a few exceptions because of how defensive play works. And those, like DBFZ doesn't have defensive play because defensive options just straight up don't exist. Like they're they're just not even real. Um, but in something like Marvel, because of how push block works, that's a defensive that's defensive options that get you out of mix ups and things like that, like block mix ups. Um, in Brawl. Stuff like shield is very, very good, and mobility is super nerfed, so defensive play where you can kind of stay in one spot and hold ground is very, very good. Um, stuff, like, stuff like that. Like, defensive play will always exist. Like, even in, um, in Melee, a game that is notoriously fast, um, someone like Fox can laser camp the whole game, and that's just, like, a game plan, and there's not much most of the cast can do about that. Um... So defensive play exists in every Smash game. The only difference is, in this one, it's like... It's almost like 64 in a way. Not like 64 in the way that's like, you get one hit and people die. Like, it's not that extreme. But it's... You really don't want to be in the other person's face. Like, you want the other person to try and come to you so you can get your big damage combos and stuff. And you can get your, like, super good pressure options. You, do, you don't want to put yourself in a circumstance where you're at a disadvantage. Which is why I think approaching and stuff like that is just not even going to be an op. Like, I don't even think that's going to be a super viable option. In terms, If you can make the other person come to you, you will win the game. That's how I That's how I see this game right now. That being said, there's probably a selection of, like, approach options that are pretty safe. And stuff like Wave Dash might prove me wrong. Although Wave Dash kind of proves me right. Because, like, Wave Dash back to button is pretty nice to have. Um, but yeah, like, the, the reduced end lag on aerials and stuff like that, it's, the, the, the first way that's easy to look at is like, oh, well, there's less, an, there's less end lag and less, uh, landing lag, so I can land with moves and it's safe and I can continue pressure. And while that's a thing, yes, the other thing you can do is someone like Marth can just be like, like hey, I'll throw out a forward air and, uh, because it has less, uh, landing lag, I'll just keep throwing out forward errors or do a down tilt or like a dash up down tilt or something like that and i i have my pressure that i can space and keep you away with so that my pressure isn't like being jeopardized by your out of shield options or whatever like your other defensive options um so yeah like running in and just trying to do buttons and trying to get your big damage stuff is probably a recipe for o2 but uh, on the other hand, the um, 
be, being able to hold a specific, like, again, stage control. Being able to hold stage control is, like, super vital in this game because it's not easy to hold, and when you do have it, it's very hard for them to get it, like, get it back. Um, like, if you have someone at the ledge and they're trying to get back on the ledge, that still seems really difficult. It was difficult in Smash 4 because of ledge traps and stuff like that, and the, the options you had on there were not fantastic. But the more important thing is... In this game, you can't like go through shields. So you run up, hold shield. And they just have to. They just have to deal with being in the corner, and they're gonna have to keep getting pressured until they find their own opening. Um, which makes Ultimate a lot more like a traditional fighting game, which is for better and for worse. The Smash people might not love it, but the fighting game people probably will. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of how I feel about um, Ultimate as a whole. In terms of Men Knight, I think that character is ridiculous. I think he has a lot of things. I think. Uh, he's probably got like a because the thing about being a popular and and like noteworthy character is that a lot of anti Meta Knight stuff is going to be found just as early as Meta Knight stuff. It's like, yeah, you're going to find Meta Knight combos, but you're also going to find how to DI out of Meta Knight combos. And so the character won't be like, he won't be like, um, like a bit of a, he, he won't be a mystery. He won't be like a matchup inexperienced situation might be day one, because nobody really has time to figure that stuff out. But still, you get the idea. Um, he did, like, I think Pikachu's the same way, although I don't really know what kind of counterplay you could have against Pikachu other than try to space and hope Thunder Jolt isn't that good. Um, Meta Knight, on the other hand, his unless his buttons are as long as they kind of looked, um, he's going to have a hard time dealing with like anything with range. The same way that he is in Smash 4. His neutral is going to be pretty weak, but the openings he does get are going to be like 50% to a stock, like somewhere around that range. So, I mean, he's good. He's he's definitely good. He got a selection of buffs that are like, wow, that's ridiculous. He got a selection of nerfs that are like, okay, that's reasonable. Um, but because of how Men Knight works in terms of like quick frame data and multiple jumps and good airspeed, that's a, that's a recipe for a character that can never be bad. So Men Knight will be good. He will probably be very good early on. But again, like over time, st- anti Men Knight stuff is going to be developed. Like, here's how you play against this character. He loses to X, Y, and Z, and then he can't really do anything about that. Characters with polarizing stuff like that is it's gonna completely destroy their prospects of being like super top tier. Cause like the thing about all right, an- another tangent, just real quick. The thing about top tiers is that very consistently in Smash games, they're top tier because you have to play their game. Meta Knight doesn't make you play his game. Like, Bayonetta, you don't have any other option. You have to play super safe. You have to, like, get hit by hit. Uh, This is Smash 4 Bayonetta in particular. I don't know enough about Bayonetta in this game. But, like, you can't really go for, like, combos and stuff like that because she can work her way out of them and then she's threatening you with these big hitboxes and up B and whatnot. Um... You have like you have to play like that. That is that is how you have to deal with it. With Cloud, it's like if he's charging limit, you're coming to him. Now you're playing Cloud's game, and that's not what you want to be doing. Like that's what a top tier does. Meta Knight doesn't have a way to immediately make you have to deal with his stuff. It, like he doesn't have a way that's like all right now you you are in the disadvantage state regardless of the circumstances. Um, that being said, not a lot of characters have that in this game. Like. Pikachu, to a degree, might have it because of how quick attack works, but it's honestly a little bit questionable. But that's what makes me think Men Knight isn't going to be, like, the best in the game, is that he doesn't get... Again, top-tier characters are top-tier because they get stuff for free. They get it, like... Like, they get stuff that other characters don't, and Men Knight gets stuff for free, but he has to work to get those openings. Like, if Men Knight gets a dash attack, yeah, you might be dead, but he has to land a dash attack. And that's not exactly the easiest thing in the world, what with it being, like, punishable and stuff. Uh, if Meta Knight has to, like, come at you and do a button, then that's a problem. Like, Bayonetta doesn't have to come at you to do anything. She she can sit wherever she wants because of, like, how bullet arts work and the, the like, projectile and, like, how... It's, it's its own thing. But you get the idea. It's that Meta Knight will, ha- will still have to work for his openings... And so he probably isn't going to be explicitly top tier. At least not later on. Maybe maybe like early earlier on in this game's lifespan where people are just kind of getting hit with stuff, trying to figure stuff out. This character might be like top two. 
but once counterplay exists, it's gonna it's gonna probably flip. Um, but yeah, that's basically all I have to say about Meta Knight and to a degree Marth. I didn't talk much about Marth, but Marth's not really a Marth's not really much to talk about. He swings the sword. That's what he does. Um, but that's uh, that's how I feel about that, and that's how I feel about Ultimate. Uh, see y'all in a week. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.